Hey and welcome to day number 19. This video is all about direct modeling or direct editing in Fusion 360. I have already talked about this topic in a previous video, but with a little bit more experience, I've noticed that I've got some of the principles wrong. So I'm going to pick up this topic again in today's video and show you some of the basics that you really need to understand when working with direct modeling and direct editing functions and features in Fusion 360. So the model that you see here uh, was actually not built by myself. I got this from uh, a website called grabcat.com and there you will find a library containing thousands or even millions of CAD files created in different CAD applications and most of these documents can be downloaded in their original file format or at least in a standard surface file format like STEP or IGS. All you have to do is to open an account on grabcat.com and start downloading. Now, I have just described direct modeling or direct editing as being something like a function or a tool, but it's actually not. It's one of the core features Fusion 360 is built around. So it basically describes the way how Fusion handles surfaces or surface models. And under these circumstances, it doesn't really matter if you are dealing with a model that has an active parametric history or if you are disabling this history. It also doesn't matter if you are dealing with a model that was created in Fusion 360 or with one that was imported as an IGS or as a step file. Direct modeling and direct editing is always available. Now let me show you what this means and let's take a look at these ribs here and they were probably created using a sketch. So it was this one here and the feature was maybe uh, this one. So I moved the history marker back to the extrusion. As you can see, it was extruding this sketch entity and when I zoom in close, let's hide the sketch again, you can see that the top part of this surface does not touch the outside of the cylinder and I could return to the sketch, adjust the sketch and make sure that the extrusion works the correct way. I can also zoom in, select this face and hit the delete key on the keyboard and let Fusion take care of this face. And as you can see, it um, perfectly connects the face of the rib to the cylinder. And this is already direct editing. When you now look at the timeline, you can see that the new delete face icon appears and when I move the history marker over to the right behind the circular pattern and take a look at the other ribs then the top part of the surface is still not touching the center cylinder and this is because it gets not recognized by the pattern command so I can double click on the pattern command and of course that's only possible because the parametric history is still active and as you can see here, the type is set to features, but only one feature is selected. So I'm going to also select the delete face feature, confirm this command. And now all of the surfaces um, of these ribs are touching the center cylinder. Now let's say you want to move one of these ribs. Then of course you could go into the settings of the circular patterns, but you can also take advantage of direct editing again by selecting these three faces. Then I bring up the move and copy command, set the pivot to the center and start rotating the rip like so. So again, that's direct editing at its best. Next, let's say you want to get rid of this rip entirely. Then I'm going to select uh, these three faces again, hit the delete key on the keyboard and Fusion gets rid of it. And it also takes care of the remaining surfaces, it extends the fillet over to the other side and I end up with a perfectly clean model. I could do the same for this fillet here by selecting it, hitting the delete key and Fusion rebuilds this section with a clean edge that I could use to introduce a chamfer like so or maybe another fillet. Now, the thing is, adjusting a model is not always that easy. It depends a little bit on the complexity of the model. Um, let's say I would like to move this cylinder uh, away from the center. So let me select the faces of the fillet here first. Then I hit the delete key so that the edge gets rebuilt. 
and then I select these three faces, bring up the move and copy command and now I try to move this over to the left and as soon as I do this I get prompted with a few error messages. And that's mainly because Fusion does not know how to rebuild the outside face of this cylinder because these two faces are touching. So to move this guy I would have to delete these two faces first, bring up the move and copy command again, select the hole, move the hole over to the left, then I start a new sketch on this plane, project this profile and use the offset command to rebuild the cylinder and then I can simply extrude the sketch like so and by selecting all of the faces now I should be able to move the cylinder around like so. Then let's try to change the diameter of this connector and for this reason I bring up the push and pull command by hitting the Q key on the keyboard and when I now try to lower the diameter, you can see that everything behaves a little bit strange. And uh, whenever this happens, I want you to take a look at the offset type. It's currently set to automatic if I switch to new offset and try to lower the diameter again, it behaves the way it should. Now, some of you may wonder if it's not better to use the initial sketches and features to make these kinds of adjustments. And the answer to this is yes, as long as you have a parametric history available, it's usually the better approach because if I will continue like this and adjust the surface, then the list here becomes longer and longer and it gets much more difficult to figure out which feature belongs to which adjustment. But also keep in mind that you do not always have a parametric history available and that's especially true for models that were created in another application and that you bring in as surface models like IGS or step files into Fusion 360. We can even simulate this by moving the history marker over to the right and then I right click on the last item in the list and select convert to direct modeling feature. So this gets rid of everything in the list and uh, all that's left is a simple base feature at the very beginning and now I could continue adding new features to it. For instance, I could apply a fillet here and this one then gets appended to the list. If you want to continue with direct editing, you can also disable the entire design history. Uh, this can be done in the right hand lower corner by clicking on do not capture design history and it can be also done by right clicking on the top level component or assembly and select do not capture design history here and this gets rid of the entire uh, timeline at the bottom of the viewport. As you can see the fillet that I have previously added appears now in the browser tree. I can select and delete it and you can also open up the bodies folder, right click on the body and select find features. So this brings up this dialog box with a list of features that Fusion will try to detect in the next step automatically. So when I click on OK, Fusion brings up a list of features that it recognizes on the model. I have an extrude feature here for instance, a few revolve features. Um, probably these holes here are recognized as circular patterns. And unlike the features that we have in the timeline, you cannot uh, double click on most of these guys to make any adjustments. Probably the fillet might work. So if I double click on the fillet here, I get this dialog box where I can, for instance, change the radius. Let's try if this works. Yeah, it does. But all in all, these guys here are not editable. Now I can continue making adjustments through direct editing. So let's select these faces here. Again, bring up the move and copy command. I set the pivot to the center of the object. And then let's see if I'm able to rotate these guys. So as you can see, I have forgotten to select the inside face. So let's do this again. And then I can move this guy or rotate this guy along this axis. And while I do this, uh, and because the, the timeline or the design history is disabled, nothing gets captured.
This is usually the best approach when you use Fusion to design things, when you create concept models, and whenever it's not that necessary to go back to an initial sketch to make any adjustments. The browser tree also contains three sketches that were used to build this part. Uh, you can still double click on a sketch, enter sketch mode, and make adjustments on the sketch entities. You can use them to create additional forms for this body or to cut the current one, but they do not drive any of the forms of this body anymore because we have uh, deleted this uh, connection by disabling the timeline. So you can also select all three of them, hit the delete key and nothing changes on the current design. But you can of course still use sketches to make adjustments. So I create a new one on the front plane, draw a few lines, exit the sketch mode, go to modify, split body. This is my body to split. The sketch is my splitting tool. I separate the body into two and move the top part down a little bit. And then I use the combine function to join both parts and to get rid of these splitting lines. I want to point out that I'm still dealing with something that is called a base feature in Fusion 360. So if you remember, I have turned the part into a direct modeling feature by right clicking on it on the uh, timeline a few minutes ago. But basically you have several different options to get to one of these base features. So the first one would be to disable the design history, but you could also start a new document and keep the design history enabled and then go to create and down to create a new base feature. So we have just entered the base feature mode and I can now start uh, creating a box on the top plane, like so. And as long as I'm in this base feature mode, I can uh, adjust everything here with direct editing or direct modeling methods. So this means that everything I do here does not get captured in the uh, design history. And also an additional feature under the modify dropdown menu becomes available. And this is the edit face. So this lets you adjust the face in a slightly different way. I can, for instance, select these points here, move them up. I can also do the same for the edges. And when I confirm this, I have created these complex surfaces. When you are done, simply click on finish base feature, and then you can continue to add additional features that get captured in the timeline as long as the design history is enabled. You can of course also right click on any item in the timeline and turn it into a direct modeling feature here. And then you end up with a base feature and by double clicking on the base feature, you are entering the base feature mode. Here you can do your adjustments and exit this mode again by clicking on the finish base feature button at the top. And that's pretty much the same like disabling the entire design history by selecting do not capture design history here and then everything that you previously had in the timeline gets converted into a base feature. When talking about direct editing there are two more things that are worth mentioning. So let me create a new design first then I go to the uh, right hand bottom corner and disable the design history. And now let's draw a box primitive on the top plane. And when I now continue to create a new sketch on one of these planar faces, so let's pick the front plane first. By hitting the L key, I enter sketch mode and activate the line tool. And now the line tool does not snap to any of these lines on the sketch plane, of course, because I would have to project these lines first. So I can do this by hitting the P key on the keyboard. Then I select this face project all of the lines and now I can continue drawing a few lines and as you can see the tool snaps to the new edges and when I now exit the sketch mode I can use one of these two areas to uh, cut pieces away 
from the box like so. And there is a slightly faster method to do this. And uh, keep in mind that we do not need any of these sketches here uh, later on because they only affect the geometry uh, as long as I'm using them. So because we do not have any active design history enabled, these sketches uh, do not drive any parts of the design anymore. And so for this reason, we can go to the uh, preferences, to the design tab and here look for auto project geometry on active sketch plane. So let's check this. And when I now draw or create a new sketch in this plane again, Fusion automatically projects all of the lines that are on the same planar face like my sketch plane. So as you can see, it already snaps to all of these points here. So I can, for instance, start to draw here. And when I exit the sketch mode, I can use these two faces to extrude parts of the model. Well, let's make another straight cut like so. There's a second setting that we can set in the preferences that controls this behavior. And this one is also available in the design tab. And here look for auto project edges on the references. And when I check this and start a new sketch on uh, this face, again, all of the lines and points from the geometry that's on the sketch plane level gets projected. But this time also everything that is located on a different plane. So as you can see, this one here lies clearly behind our sketch plane. But when I look at these planes perpendicular, I can also use line segments and elements from a plane that's in front or behind the current sketch plane to draw these lines. And then I exit the sketch mode again. And here I have the option to pick one of these two areas and let's make another extrusion around here. The last thing I want to show you in today's video is how to handle the mirror command because this one behaves a little bit differently than you are probably used to. So bring up the mirror command first, select the entire body and this plane as my mirror plane, make sure that the operation is set to join. And then I activate the push and pull command, select this face. And when I move this one back and forth, you can see that also the one on the other side behaves exactly the same way. And this is because um, the part is structured inside this mirror command in the browser tree. And this one remains active and stable even if I affect only one side of the model. So let's make an extrusion here, bring this out a little bit. And then I bring up the uh, push and pull command, select this face, move it back and forth. And as you can see, the other side still behaves the same way. The mirror command over here remains valid as long as you do not make any massive changes on one side of the model, uh, like uh, deleting parts or cutting parts. And if you want to get rid of the mirror function, yourself you can simply right click on the mirror command here and select dissolve and when i now bring up the push and pull command again i only affect one side of the model all right then that's all you need to know about direct editing and direct modeling in fusion 360 for the moment so um thanks for tuning in thanks for your attention uh, subscribe if you like the content and see you in the next one